All right, folks, in this video, we're gonna drain and refill the cooling system. Uh, it's not that big of a job. I've oriented the machine so our radiator is back here between the tracks. It allows us room to get to the petcock. So we can go into there, open that up, we'll take the cap off the radiator, let her dump, and essentially fill it up, and that's gotta go through some heating and cooling cycles uh, to make sure it purges all the air out. So underneath the machine here, you'll see this is the petcock. That should be the drain for the cooling system anyways. So we'll see if it can't. Might have some dirt in it too. Oh, first try. Right, so we'll leave that in there. We'll go pull the top off the radiator now and that should start draining a little bit quicker. If you leave the top on, it'll pull the negative side of the cap open and drain out your overflow jug. Uh, overflow jug on this one is empty. Radiator was full, however. And, uh, you know, I think it's probably safe to say do this when it's cold. So at this point, I've let the machine sit overnight. So that thing's done draining. We'll tighten up that pick up. Now, it's just plastic, so don't get carried away with it. Now we'll fill it back up. The inevitable is going to happen, so I'm trying to prepare for it. <laughs> we'll stack some napkins around here. It's kind of in a tricky spot because it sits underneath this. I don't know if this comes off easily or not, but we're just going to get after it with a funnel here a little bit. Okay. Stick that in on a bit of an angle, let that hold it. We've got some of the John Deere Cool Guard 2 pre mixed. It's yellow in color. Then the inevitable happened. <laughs> so we filled her up to the tippy top. Almost the scanlon's about kicked. Okay. All right, so it is full full. Right to the very top. We're gonna fill up our overflow. Also, because as it goes through its heating and cooling cycles, it's going to pull out of the overflow jug. Is the uh, coolant expands and contracts here. So in case you don't know how a radiator cap works, this is the pressure side, it's the positive side right there, the big spring. So as pressure builds, that spring will open and it will push coolant out of the radiator, you know, through the hose here to the overflow jug. Let's suck out a little bit of this coolant here so I can put the radiator cap on it. And then on the contrary, as it cools down, the negative side of the cap opens here, the bottom side, and will draw fluid out of the overflow and back into the radiator. You know, prevents any air if it's a closed system. So there, so we're gonna put our cap back on here. And if you're curious if your cap works or not, just buy a new one. They're quite inexpensive. You can test uh, your radiator cap with a, with a pressure tester, but it only checks the positive side of the cap. It doesn't check the negative side, the suction side. So like I said, if I ever doubt a cap works, I just replace it. I'm gonna fill this between the full and the low mark because I assume we have a little bit of air in the system. And that's pretty well it on uh, your cooling system exchange. I'm going to take and fire it up and I'm going to let it warm up all the way because we've still yet to change the hydraulic fluid. So I want to let it warm up all the way and then that'll give it a chance to heat cycle, you know, from hot to cold for us. And then we're just going to monitor the level in the overflow jug. Uh, on some cars, not, not a piece of equipment like this, but on some cars you have to run your heater on full. They tell you to turn your heat on and that's because it has a vacuum or electric uh, water shutoff valve. Now this one, the bypass valve on the engine block I see was mechanical. 
uh, you know, you can shut off the flow to the heater course. We don't have to really worry about running our heat on high. We're gonna start it up and let it warm up all the way. Kind of. So that's really it on the cooling system. The you know temp gauge is coming up and I've had it running for quite a while. I think you probably really need to go out and work the machine to get it to warm up. You know, if it does, they're pretty efficient the way they run. Uh, I've got to, we're gonna let it sit and cool down and then you know when we go home and use it for the first time, we'll take some coolant with us and we'll let it cool down, check it the next day when it's cool. But the good news is we have good heat coming out of the cab, so we don't likely have any air in the system. And uh, that's pretty much it on that. I've turned the machine in such a way that we have most of the hydraulic cylinders collapsed. Everything except the boom cylinder. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to drain the hydraulic oil out of it. So I've rotated it so we can actually get to the drain plug because I think it holds around 11 and 12 gallons. We're going to need a couple five gallon buckets. And then we're going to change the filters in the, uh, in the tank there. I think one thing worth noting is the level of the fluid. It is above the max mark. However, when they tell you to check this, they tell you to have the boom out straight, you know, bucket out and on the ground and the blade on the ground. And when you do that, it is on, on this machine, it was at the top red line. However, when I've got all the cylinders collapsed as much as I can and the blade up, that's where my fluid level is. So we're gonna make a mental note of that. And because the machine's still gonna be sitting in this orientation, that's where we're gonna fill it back up to. So our drain plug lives right here. It's a square drive. I've got a, I don't know what this is, a half inch maybe? Nope, bigger than that. Try this one here. Nope, bigger than those. Let me go get a different one. Let's see here. Oh, it is a half inch square drive. I grabbed the wrong one. So half inch square drive. We're gonna crack this baby loose. I've got two, two and a half five gallon buckets, so hopefully that's enough. I think it should be. Before doing this, though, we did have it right. Let me crack the cap loose out of it. This system does build pressure. That would have been an experience we don't need. <laughs> okay, so drain the pressure off it. Get it to where we can give it a handy and then we'll get our bucket right ready. Okay. So I see a little liquid come out there. And then you can you can do a drain on this just like you can with the uh, the fuel tank sump. Because there can be water in the bottom of this also. Let's see, I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see. So I'm gonna have the bucket in the way. But bear with me. We'll find it again here. Oh yeah, all kinds of crap. So, well there's oil now, but yeah, there was some junk that came out initially. Oh boy, I made a mess now. Oh, now she's cooking. And we'll just be ready with another bucket when that one gets full. We can put the lid on this little fella. It's already out of the sight of the gauge. And of course, I don't know the spec that they give you. I don't know if that's total system capacity or if that's drain and refill. I bought 15 gallons, which should be more than what we need. A lot of oil still in the hoses and in the lines and cylinders and cap on it, hoping it will slow it down a little bit here for us. And we did. We're gonna let that finish. It's down to a peter right now. We probably, about 10 gallons I think is where we're at. 
it appears that we have to take this where well, it's stripping off here peel it back because I believe this is an access cover for our rear filter well, looks like nuts and bolts let me grab a wrench here that one out actually thir 13 mil Figure before we open any of this up and get dirt around here, we'll take this baby right out of the way, kind of get things cleaned up a little bit. Get that to the side. Okay. I think we'll be okay now. We'll uh, pull the lid off this guy. Okay. So I'll make sure there wasn't any surprises there. Well, if somebody did service this, they did a good job at concealing the bolts as far as not cracking any paint loose on them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But this should have been done at 2,000 hours. But who knows, really? Let me get a magnet tray. There is an O-ring. That's quite interesting. I wonder, if it, I wonder if that's how it's supposed to be. We're gonna have to look and service data over that. Somebody did, it looks like somebody put some kind of anaerobic sealer on this O-ring, which is kind of weird. Not sure what that's all about. And then this is our suction filter here, which thankfully isn't jammed right full of metal, but I don't know if this is supposed to be attached to the top or what the thought is here with, with everything else. Let me just see what this feels like. Okay, it must just go down. There's an opening or it's a tapered uh, pipe that it sets on. So let me go set this somewhere. I've got a new one. The good news is there's not a bunch of part numbers laying in the bottom or a bunch of junk. I'm gonna take and kind of wipe this off, clean this off, and then um, we're gonna pull out the filter in the rear, hopefully. It's weird that it does look like somebody put a sealer on it though. Safety tape. Yeah, we get something a little different from back here. spring pressure on it let's see how much okay not a ton okay I just want to make sure before we did the big rip and tear here now she's flowing more before I pull this off I don't know if these are indexed but I'll mark it 
figured just in case. We'll put an arrow facing out, so just, just in case it is. Save you some time of chasing it around in circles. Stick these up in our magnet tray. Pull the lid off there. Yeah, somebody put some anaerobic sealer on this one also. Huh. A spring that was that way up. It's a closed coil on both ends, so it probably doesn't matter. Now look up here. This piece sat right on top of the filter. Liar, liar, pants on fire. This filter has a date on it of 2012, and that's what year the machine is. So, now we know the guy was full of sugar. When he said he did all the filters at 2,000 hours, did the whole thing. Well, this proves that he's a liar because that says May 2012 right on the filter. Yeehaw. So same thing back here. I want to take and get the dirt wiped off the outside before we go sticking it back together. It is relatively clean. There's really nothing to see down in there. <coughs> Just an empty hole. And the pipe that the filter sits up on. Okay, yep, that's really clean. Okay, that baby's ready. Let's get our new filter. That brand new from the deer. This one says September, 29th, September 2021. Made in Indonesia. Maybe he had some new old stock, I don't know. Let's stick that baby down in. There's a little pipe down in there, it sits on. Get her lined up. Don't really feel it have any resistance on the pipe. Just kind of sits on it. Let me just double check the number here with my old one. Five, six, eight, yep, okay. I just want to make sure, so we'll stick that down there. There is a little stub of a male pipe sticking up. And this must be a relief valve here, I'm assuming. That's what it appears to be. I could be wrong. And that sticks right on top of the filter. And then our spring sticks right on top of that. So pretty self-explanatory. Let's go clean this lid off. And uh, I believe I bought us some new O-rings. Man, that uh, anaerobic sealer on there was kind of difficult to get off. Uh, and I've never seen that used on an O-ring, unless it was some kind of gasket shellac or something, but it looked like the red anaerobic sealer. Uh, I do have us a new O-ring, so we're going to put that on there. Maybe somebody put it on there because they reused the O-ring and it kept falling off. You know, maybe they did it to hold it in place. I'm not sure. Um, just because they didn't change the filter doesn't mean that they didn't take it out and you know maybe spray it off with brake parts cleaner or something. But they got some of the sealer on this surface here. I wanna make darn sure our O-ring's gonna seal, so I'm gonna scrape that off. These filters are rather expensive, but well, I figure if you're only doing it every couple thousand hours, <laughs> you know, what's the cost really, you know, price per hour? It's pretty inexpensive in the big picture. That's what it looks like when it's all just kind of sitting there. So in this case, you're curious. All right. I think everything looks golden. Oh, hello. Oh, I love good neighbors. 
Maybe caught a guy backing into my area. So he's gonna go confront him for me and shoot him if necessary. So that's nice. He's just like State Farm. I told him I'm in the middle of something right now if he can go deal with it. I'll put this lid down very gingerly here. I'm gonna kind of hold that down, start these all by hand. Snug these up to factory specs, of course. And then we'll have to look in the uh, book there to see about the suction filter, the suction screen on this side to see is was that set up correctly or not. Hopefully it states in there. Nothing really in service day. Nothing really useful anyway. Um, it does allude to the fact that you remove the lid and then remove the rod with the filter But nothing about uh, setup on it as far as You know depth or height or anything like that And I'm guessing you can clean these because they're a fine screen um, I just elected to to replace it I'm going to leave that jam nut where it is, assuming nobody's touched this, but you never know. And then we'll just jam it back down. I guess, I guess my guess would be is that the overall length of this rod would be set in such a way that when the lid was on it, it didn't allow this to come up off from the tube inside the tank. That would be my assumption. So we can see if that's the case, if we can you know, figure out how to measure that somehow. Then we'll be in good shape. Good shape for the shape we're in anyways. There's another hydraulic filter on this thing also, the pilot filter, which we have to do yet. I figured we'd get the main portion done here. Well, wow, really overtake that fella. Okay. So we will set this little fella down in there. Let's see, okay, it does kind of click on. And I guess we could get a measurement, albeit crude, across the straight edge down to the top of that nut. Let me get some measuring device. So straight edge on here, we'll stand that up. And then let's see. Let me just go down to that nut, see where that's at, sitting straight. That sits kind of offset. Okay. 1.9, we'll call it 1.903. Plus, you know, the thickness of our bar. So if we stick our bar here, and we measure down to the flat. Oh, it's right on the money. Okay, so the thickness of our bar, it's actually a couple thou over probably. Oh, perfect, okay. So that makes sense. So it will hit that double ended nut. Okay, we got that figured out. So once we stick our lid on, it'll come down and hit that where they've got those jam nuts on there. Uh, but if, it, if yours was goofed up, I guess that's how you could figure it out, is you know, just take your measurement down. You know, Obviously, whatever, your, whatever straight edge you're measuring from, add that thickness from this face here uh, to the top of that. So we're in good shape. Let me clean this up the rest of the way and get our O-ring. I'm thinking it would be a smart idea before we put this together is to fill our tank up through the big giant open hole. That's gonna be a, a heck of a lot easier than dumping it through the little tiny hole. There's no reason why we can't, right? Not that I know of. One reason why we can't, because the drain plug's not in it. I'm gonna take and clean this up on the wire wheel. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, pipe dope on it. We're gonna tighten it back up. And then we're gonna fill it up to where it was and then just put our lid back on.
Make sure you put your plug in at this point. This stuff's wicked expensive. carried away went a little bit over the mark that we had just about well just a little too high but prior to uh, sucking that out with a fluid extractor I'm gonna put it together started it up move all the hydraulics you know push out any any air that perhaps is in there and then we'll see where the level is checking it the proper way if you will Brand new o-ring. We'll stick that on there. Make sure it's not gonna jiggle off. Get that on our rod. Of course, this is indexed with the overflow there. back on it. Put our overflow hose here first. Get that up in there. And that's that. We'll put the metal piece back on. We'll fire it up, go outside, and move it every which way. Okay. We gotta move some stuff here, folks.
don't even think it's in the sight glass now. But that's good, at least we don't have to take any out. And we know our O-rings are sealed. Let me get a flashlight and look in there. You can see where these two bolts go, and these are just banjo fittings. Let me just make sure I'm not being deceived here. Nope, it's, it's just below this one. So let me get a funnel. And we've got the boom out and the blade down. That's how it tells you to check the oil. So it shouldn't take much more, maybe another gallon or so. getting close here oh there it is it's just starting to come up in the sight glass now it takes a second these banjo fittings are pretty small so you got to kind of let it equalize you know feels like we're going to use just about the whole 10 gallons that'll give us an extra pail left over for and hydraulic hoses and stuff like that. We'll probably, I'm not going to take it back. We'll keep it around. Yep. Yeah, we, we ain't got much left in this pail. Perfect, that's right on the full mark and we've got maybe a half a gallon left so we put probably nine and a half gallons in it to get us to the full mark, blade down, boom all the way out. All right, that's good enough for the girls I run with. And last but not least, there should be a small filter under here the pilot filter for the pilot hydraulics I'm assuming I think that one's slotted I think these back ones are slotted yes sir there we are, a big giant hydraulic pump up there. Okay. And then, uh, I'm assuming, we'll have to I'll double check in the book here, but I think this maybe just unscrews. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, this little guy right here. I think you can. Before I unscrew it, A, I'm gonna get a bucket, and B, I'm gonna double check service data. Just to be on the safe side. be okay so just for grins and giggles I did relieve the pressure from the hydraulic system in the sense of just taking the cap off you know what I mean oh it wasn't very tight at all let's see okay it does come to a stop let's see see 24 mil la meter that worked out well Hopefully that lights up where you guys can see, in case something epic happens. That's are pretty long-winded. There it is. So, there's an O-ring on the top of this uh, cat. I did not get that. We're just throwing that right out there right now. We take the little filter off. So that's this side. We got a brand new one here from the deer. Oh, 
Look at that, it comes with an O-ring. Fantastic. It made up for my negligence. So we're gonna take the new filter, slip her up in there, and then we'll take our housing here, take the old O-ring off the mat, slip on our new one. It's all slimy, so we're just gonna leave it just like that. It looks super duper clean. So we're just gonna leave a little bit of the oil on the threads. And that little guy back up in. Give her just a light tap and we'll get her ran, we'll get her cleaned up, put the plate back on. And I think that's it folks. Um, the only thing we haven't shown is adjusting the alternator belt, the air conditioning belt, and uh, doing a valve adjustment on it, which I don't know when that's due, if at all, I'm not real sure. This thing has a little something come up and give it a little what's up. <laughs> we'll stick that back up there. Get all of our bolts back in it. Put a little dab of oil on. So I think we're ready to go out and play with the excavator. That'll be fun. I've got a tree stump at home I want to dig out. I cut the tree down about I don't know, probably six years ago, maybe. Six or eight years ago, probably longer than that. Is an ash tree. And I do have a little backhoe on the back of my lawnmower, but that's, it would have been a monumental task for a machine that tiny. There we have it. Uh, I think that's about it. All we need to do is get the correct battery for it now. He's got some kind of wing dong battery rigged up in there, held in with a block of wood. So I do want to get the correct battery for it. But I think that's it, folks. We're done. Show's over. So we'll leave it at that, folks. Hydraulic fluid, your suction filter, the main hydraulic filter, plus the pilot filter, and the engine coolant. That's what we did in this video. All pretty easy. I'm going to go out and work it again to get any of the air out of the pilot system. Double check our fluid, but it was minimal what we lost. Maybe, you know, a, I don't know, a few ounces, maybe 10 ounces, something like that. Uh, it, 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 not even that, probably. Whatever. <laughs> so we'll just double check it. Then we're going to take it home. Or I'm going to take it to my house. And uh, we're going to go out and use it. Let it get warmed up. And fingers crossed this baby's good. I've had it running for a while outside. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with it, but hopefully it doesn't have some weird quirk or something that doesn't show up until you start using it. Um, I did trust the guy when I asked him that directly. I looked him right in the face pretty sternly and asked him, you know, is there anything I need to know before I leave? And he assured me that there isn't. So that's it. I'm gonna finish wiring up my light up there on the roof. And we'll see you guys on the next video.